I see I see Springsteen in Paris. The best show I've seen in 27 years. That's what years. you said. Okay, now, I, I saw, the first time I saw Bruce was August 31st, 1985. Right. It was me, Danny McGrath, who went on to be the bad cop, Sue Solovsky and Charlene Cole, two adorable little broads. And we go, we have last row on the upper deck, as far as you can be from the stage, a giant stadium in East Rutherford, New East Rutherford. And uh, amazing show. And the first one's always the best, but this is probably the best one I've seen since then. He opens up with the ties that bind off the river. He goes in the downbound train, no surrender. Uh, no surrender. Really. Oh, my God. He did He did almost all of Born in the USA, right, Danny? Like, yeah. I mean, the, almost the yeah, whole album. He, that's not one of your favorite albums, or is it? One it is. Them? I mean, yeah. it's become, when it came out, I was like, commercial, it's commercial, no? Uh, yeah, but still, I love it. Good I don't, stuff, if you though. listen, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just good music. That's when he was really, he's like, I gotta make the money now. Well, he would, he used to do four hour mega shows back then. Open up a boy, just come out, and go, you know, a hundred thousand people. How you doing out there? Boom, 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 boom. I remember me, Charlene Cole, <laughs> Sue Solovsky, and the bad cop Dan McGrath. We got up from the beginning, just boom, and we're just screaming. So we go to Paris. I see him in Paris with Dan Filato and so, several other people, and uh, unbelievable show. So Nils Lofgren, the great Nils Lofgren, says to me, "Come back." Um, by the way, Nils Ofkin during Because the Night does a guitar solo that's uh, unreal. <laughs> He's spinning around. The show was so emotional. You laugh, you cry, you dance. It's like a great musical. It is. And uh, he danced with his little daughter, who's now like 18 and really good looking for Dancing in the Dark. She was, you know, you have a, like the Courtney Cox thing. Yeah. And Barry Sobel, the comedian, does the most ridiculous dance to Dancing in the Dark. He looks like Courtney Cox. And I almost moved away from him. It was embarrassing. Uh, so Nils says to me, AR, come back to the Four Seasons afterwards. Uh, we got a little get together there. And I'm like, okay. And I don't know if I'm going to meet Springsteen or anything. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Springsteen, when I was right out of rehab, called me and talked to me for like an hour and a half on the phone, which helped like save my life. I had uh, Dan Fogelberg call me. I had, I had a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sing Jesse's Girl? That's not me. <laughs> I go to the Four Seasons, I walk into this little room, and the Four Seasons is on the Champs Elysees. Nice. All right, um, a stunning looking hotel, by the way. You know me, I'm a Quattro Seasons guy. You stayed at the La Roja Roof Inn. I stayed at La Roja. I stayed at the. I stayed at the. How do you say? No, you know where I stayed at? Le Plume, Le Mage, Le Plume. <laughs> what that psycho in the jail with me was yelling out. So I, uh, I go to the Four Seasons. And there's a little area, like a VIP kind of room area with a bar and a bunch of tables. And I walk in, and it's Nils Lofgren and his great wife, Amy. It's Max Weinberg and his family. It's little Steven and a bunch of people, his family. And in the corner is Springsteen with his mom. He took his mom. His mom's 87. She dances at the show. He puts a spotlight on her. She's, you know, still going strong. So I'm like, ah, I'll probably talk to his mom, whatever. Because I was nervous. Would you, let me ask you this. You're a tough guy. I would never. Would you be nervous talking to Bruce Springsteen? I couldn't. I, I told you, like, I don't get, like, uh, starstruck. But right. that, that one, I couldn't. I don't think I could even uh, yeah. tip it. It's odd. It. Now, yeah. I know, he's in the room, and I know he knows who I am, like, but I'm not going to be rude and interrupt whatever, <laughs> you know. His, what's the fun? I know. No, I, just, I know. It's like I'm like I'm a 10-year-old. But see, when I met Howard, it was anyone, again, like, when you when you get to love them when you're 13 or something, it's, it's more special. When I met Howard, it was on the air. I met him on the air, which was way intimidating. And then I got to know him every day. But this is like Bruce has that mysterious rock star thing. So I'm talking to Nils Lofgren, and Bruce is talking to his mom, and Ryan Seacrest, and I think, okay, maybe I'm off the hook. There's no pressure. He's not going to. So I'm talking to Amy Lofgren, who's a doll, and over her shoulder, I see Springsteen get up and say something to his mom, like, I'm going to go do something. Are you okay? Kisses his mom on the cheek, and then points to where he's going, right at me. So now I'm like, okay, this might be happening. So now I can't hear a thing Amy's saying, and I'm being rude. I'm like, what am I going to say well, to Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> you know, so so uh, I haven't talked to him since that night. And he called me two and a, almost three years ago on the phone. I haven't talked to him since. What? So little, so pit, not, little so pitchy dog. It took about it took it took like twenty minutes for him to walk to me. <laughs> you, know, you were like tunnel vision. It, it was really slow motion. Really ten like seconds. A movie scene. Yeah. Now like he's, a, he's also about five foot nine. Which is disconcerting because he seems That's what 50, I am. fifty feet. Well, then he's he's shorter than you because he, he's shorter than you. Uh, is he pro, really? I think so. Yeah. I mean, can, with my, I think he is. Yeah. I mean, we're about the same height or so. Maybe he's, you know whatever. He's maybe. got the boots on all the time. Yeah, but on stage he seems fifty feet tall. You yeah. always see him on TV. 
So he's walking towards me, and Amy's speaking, and I'm looking over the shoulder, and he's walking right at me. And I'm like, okay, mm. I'm going to have to say something to Bruce Springs. So he he taps uh, Amy on the shoulder, and she turns around. She goes, Bruce, how you doing? And they're like three feet away from me, and he just points. He's wearing a flannel shirt. Like it's out of a, like a, like just a cliche almost. He's got a flannel shirt on jeans, and he goes, eh, I'll talk to this guy. <laughs> points right at me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> See, I just get nervous when you say uh, Yeah, anything. he goes, I want to talk to this guy. And then he goes, oh, yeah, Bruiser. So he comes over to me. He goes, how are you, brother? And he and he puts his arms around me, and he hugs me. And I hug him. And I go, Bruce, I got to tell you, man, that phone call helped save my life. And I I like, I like I beat heroin, man. Like, I'm all right. And he goes, he goes, man, it's the best news I heard in a long time. He goes, come here. And he hugged me again. He goes, and then he just, like, we, we talked about, like, the dangers of that stuff and how he goes, he goes, as long as you have a creativity, if you're creative, Everything will come back. He goes, sometimes you meet guys and they don't have that in their life. Well, and that's it's a hard. good point. You know, actually, they got nothing to go back to. And, and, and Nick, I'm telling you, it's, it, rang, it rang so true to me because I have buddies I grew up with. And look, 80% of what got me out of that was what I do for a living. Like the love of this, hanging out with guys like you, being funny, the ability to be funny. It, it, it's like a drug. And performing and going back to that, the fans, you know, th that helped me get out of the, the gutter. And without that, I don't know if I would have made it. So sometimes my buddies will have set like heroin problems, smoking crack cocaine. Yeah, and what are they going to turn to? They work at a gas station. And yeah. I almost go like, pardon me, goes... Well, you can have fun there, too. Well, no, I, I have. No, but I'm just saying, I'm not trying to seem like... Uh, I, I, no, I almost right. feel like going to you're them. Right. I almost feel like going to them, keep getting high. You know, I don't know. Like, that's almost yeah. the advice I yeah. want to give to them. Yeah. Because Ooh. they're kind of lost in life, which I would have been without a bunch of lucky breaks, and which I would have been without a phone call from Bruce Springsteen and a lot of other great people who helped me, family and friends. But So I got to say that to him, which was very important to me. And and the conversation ended after like about 10 minutes, and he said, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, have fun. I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you. And um I, I, I thought, what do I say to him at the end? Yeah, I was going to say, this is where it gets awkward when you meet somebody famous. Yeah, hey, yeah. You want to have lunch tomorrow? Now, I've met him, I've met him before. And I'm the, <laughs> the, the funniest thing happened with the phone call. The phone call, Nicky says to me, call, uh, two, three years ago, he goes, call me anytime. He goes, you need, call, need me, call me anytime. I, his private number was on my call ID. And I thought, how funny. And I, obviously, I never bothered him. I remember you telling me that. But know. how funny would it be if like, every day I said, Bruce, you want to play like water polo? I know you got a pool. Can I come over? <laughs> Well, man, I don't know. Is everything around? Are you staying clean? I'm fine. I just want to... Hey, Bruce, I wrote a poem. Maybe you can put, some, <laughs> put music to it. Now, Bruce, listen to this. The screen door... No, the metal door slams. I've, I've modernized it. <laughs> no, so, so, so I never call him. And I said, what am I going to say to him to end? And again, I told you one time I met Prince, and all I said to him was, Raspberry Beret is a great song, and he looked at me like I was retarded. Yeah, I said, what do I say to him? So I say the corniest cliche thing. I go... Hey, man, keep on rocking. That's what I said. To you him. didn't say in the free world? <laughs> <laughs> well, we weren't. We were in France. <laughs> I said, keep on rocking. What else are you going to so, do? So, so he looks at me, and he goes, you know it, brother. <laughs> and then there he woke up. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's just cool. Yeah, it was... Uh, that, well, was that a, made me nervous, just the way you described it. He, he, yeah. I see him getting up and walking towards me, and he goes, yeah, I want to talk to this guy. And... Uh, Again, you know, if, what he, if, he, if he, he ever that, heard what we're saying right now, I probably sound like a corny what idiot. What if he but, said that, and he points, and you start walking towards him, and he goes, excuse me. You <laughs> got I go, Bruce, listen. It's the concierge who had so, you know, restaurant information for me. I go, Bruce, listen. I, I, forget it. <laughs> That's a yeah. <laughs> what a story. I mean, yeah, come no, on. So, and in France on top of it. So, I mean, basically, so Paris was kind of a... Kind of an up and down okay, situation. Uh, bittersweet. Bittersweet. <laughs> no, wait, no, no, no. This is the great thing. This is this is Artie Lang. This is quintessential Artie Lang. I said, Bruce, I'm doing great, and you helped save my life. Thanks, buddy. I'm glad. Next day, I get arrested.